Hi, and welcome to today's lesson on battery technology, where we will be covering the parameters that define a lithium ion cell. I'm Akshay Gill, and I'm an ex Tesla battery engineer, founder of MakerMax, that specializes in battery technology courses, products, and solutions for companies, professionals, and students around the world. Today, we're going to talk about parameters that define a lithium ion cell, starting with the nominal voltage. The term nominal is used in our everyday language, and you can see it being used, for example, when we say the nominal interest rate of a loan. Now, what does nominal mean in terms of voltage of a cell? Well, nominal is the defining voltage of the cell. So, for example, if I say a 3.7 volt nominal voltage is the nominal voltage of the cell. That means that the voltage of the cell ranges anywhere between 2.8 volts to 4.2 volts based on how much charge is inside the cell. To understand this, you first need to understand that the voltage of a cell is not constant throughout its operation. So, for example, a 3.7 volt nominal cell would be at 4.2 volts when it's fully charged and 2.8 volts when it is fully discharged. So this voltage range, range has been defined as a 3.7 volt nominal by the industry. Similarly, you can go to the store and you can say, I would like to buy today a 9 volt cell. I'm sure you've done that in the past. A 9 volt would be the nominal voltage of the cell, which is the defining voltage of the cell, and the actual voltage would vary depending on how much charge is inside the cell. Why is nominal voltage important? Nominal voltage is important because it tells us, gives us a quick idea of what is the voltage range of the cell and lets us understand if we're, for example, building a larger pack. For example, if we were building a 37 volt pack using 3.7 volt nominal cells, we immediately know from the back of our heads that we need 10 cells in series to make a 37 volt nominal pack. So that is how a nominal voltage helps us. And it's the first, one of the first things you look at in the data sheet of the cell when you're trying to select it. The second is the capacity of the cell. Now the capacity talks about how much charge is inside the cell and how much charge can be stored inside the cell when it's fully charged. That is the defining uh, term, which is known as capacity. Now, capacity is measured in ampere hours, AH. So ampere hours, as you can see, is a multiplication between amps and hours. And what this means, for example, if a cell has a capacity of two amp hours, that means that you can discharge that cell for two amps for one hour, or one amp for two hours, or 0.5 amps for four hours, right? So a multiplication of amps and hours gives us the charge that is inside the cell, uh, which is the capacity of the cell. Now, it does not always have to be capacity for sure means that it is when it is the cell is fully charged. What is the amp hour of the cell when it's fully charged? But I can use the term amp hours to even say what is the current charge remaining inside the cell. So a two amp hour cell can have one amp hour remaining, which means that its state of charge is 50%. So now we've learned about nominal voltage and capacity. The third thing we're gonna talk about is the maximum power output or the maximum current output. In the previous example, I said a two amp hour cell can be uh, can be discharged for two uh, at two amps for one hour. But what is defining that limit of two amps? Why not four amps or six amps or eight amps or 10 amps? Right, so that is the term that defines maximum power output or maximum current output. And that is defined in the data sheet of the cell. So for example, uh, a cell, a two amp hour cell can have a maximum current output of four amps, right? So there's two parameters here at play. There's a maximum current output and maximum instantaneous and maximum continuous. So when, I'm, when someone says to you, the current output, the maximum current output of a cell is four amps, 
the first thing you need to ask them, is that the instantaneous or the continuous? So 4 amps instantaneous means you can discharge the cell for 4 amp, 4 amp for a very short amount of time. And 4 amps continuous means that it can deliver 4 amps for a large amount of time, say 20 to 30 minutes. What is the limiting factor uh, that defines the current output of the cell? The current output is limited by a lot of different things. Uh, the first being the construction of the cell itself. What is the pathway of the chemical reactions and the ions and the electrons to flow out of the cell and into the load? What does that path look like defines uh, how much current can be discharged instantaneously from the cell. If you're looking at how much uh, charge can be taken out or how much current can be taken out in a continuous fashion, that is mostly limited by the, the internal resistance, which is the heat causes the heat buildup inside the cell. So if the internal resistance is higher of the cell, that means there's going to be more heat buildup. That means that for uh, you, can, you can take that current out of the cell for a smaller amount of time. That brings me to the next parameter, which is the internal resistance of the cell. A very important parameter where we club all the different construction, chemistry, and all the different things into a single value, which is mostly termed uh, in the data sheets as a DC uh, internal resistance, which is uh, then um, specified in milliohms. Mostly, it's, you'll find it uh, to be in milliohms uh, for lithium ion cells. And so this is the value that will tell you a lot of different things. That'll tell you how much current you can take out of the cell instantaneously, how much heat builds up inside the cell, and what is how do you model the cell when there's charge flowing in and out of the cell. That brings me to the next uh, value, which is the C rate. The C rate is a parameter. It's more uh, not a defining parameter of the cell, but a conversational parameter. So let me take, give you an example and explain it through an example. Uh, we talked about capacity. So let's take that example back and we now have a cell which has two amp hour capacity. Now I can say that the C rate in which I'm going to discharge uh, the cell is one C. This means that I will fully discharge the cell in one hour. So for two amp hour cell, a 1C discharge rate means that the current I'm drawing from the cell is 2 amps. Now let's talk about a 0.5C discharge rate. If I say that I have a 2 amp hour cell and I'm discharging it at a 0.5C rate, that means I every hour I, I'm, um, I'm taking away half of its capacity, 0.5C uh, of, the, of the capacity. So in the first hour, I take away half the capacity, and in the second hour, I take away the other half of the capacity. So in total, it takes two hours to fully discharge the cell. And so the current that I'm going to be drawing from a 2 amp hour cell uh, when discharging at 0.5 C is 1, 1 amps. The final parameter we're going to look at is the operating temperature range. This is an important parameter. Uh, which is defined by the construction of the cell and even the form factor of the cell. Are you using an 1863 cell or a pouch cell or a prismatic cell? All plays into defining what is the ideal operating temperature range of that cell and which this is going to be given in the data sheet of the cell. Now the reason why this is important is because if you are not adhering to these limits, say that the cell can only operate up to a temperature of 60 degrees Celsius and you are continuously operating the, uh, the, the, the cell at 80 degrees Celsius, this is going to have long-term negative impact on the cell's performance. So you wanna make sure as a battery designer that the cells that you are choosing for the current output that you choose, the power requirements that your load needs, do not exceed the operating temperature range. And if they do exceed the operating temperature range, you have a choice to make. Either we have to go with a more powerful cell, which has a higher current throughput, or you have to design a cooling system around the cells to make sure that at max performance, they are operating at the ideal operating temperature range.
So today we covered the parameters that define a lithium-ion cell, starting with the nominal voltage, the capacity of a cell, the current throughput, which is max and continuous, the C rate, internal resistance of the cell, and finally, the operating temperature of a cell.